Hello, this is Jeremy Bailey from TheEnvironmentGuide.com. Last couple of weeks, I've worked on a 3D environment project in the Unreal Engine. I was contacted by a local studio recently, and they asked me to do this as part of a art test for their applications. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the process I did to make it, the things I learned, and how I'm going to apply that in the future. Of course, the very first part of any project is going over to the overview. So obviously, I read through this, I found out what I needed, and I wrote them down. I created a text document that includes just a, a quick overview of what those requirements were. And once I had those requirements, I then went to look at the reference material that was provided and read through the Wikipedia articles. The Wikipedia provided a lot of useful insights into the culture and history of the area, as well as some of the main key features such as architecture, uh, influential people in the history such as artists, and I actually came up with the name of this project from from a hotel that's in this area. The supplied image that uh, came with this project, it specified to use this as reference, but it did not say make a copy of this. So I did go out and get more reference material and made something that wasn't this scene, but was uh, inspired by it and included many of the key aspects of what uh, makes this space what it is. So the first thing I started to do was break down the major key features of this image. Now, what was the most important thing that made it what it is? Things like uh, reoccurring things like arches, pillars, windows. I mean, you notice that arches come down here. The arches are over the windows as well. You know, these other buildings have arches as well. It's obviously a very important part of the architecture of this area. Pillars is everywhere too. Clearly, the bottom of the buildings are all supported by pillars. Pillars are also used solely as decoration, such as out here. So those were important aspects. Some other things like uh, they have, there's lots of uh, plants around. So clearly plants are an important part of the culture. So I needed to include, include uh, planters of some sort, like there's these wrought iron uh, I don't know what you call those. They're just uh, they're little like iron baskets. Anyways, I, I love that iron work, so I made some of that in my project as well. That was the most essential part, was just finding those key elements that were absolutely necessary to make this. With the key elements identified, I then proceeded to add these things to my notes. So just mentioning that, you no, know, I need an arch, I need columns, I need, windows, I need walls, I need whatever. It's all in the notes. And I tried to arrange it in an essential order. So the most important things would be modeled before the least important things. That way, if you run out of time, you have the main stuff done. Using online image search, I then expanded greatly the amount of reference material I found. I used the important elements that I identified and created a collection of images that things that I found inspiring or liked or wanted to include in the environment. When it came to modeling, the images were a very invaluable asset to have. They helped a lot in speeding up the process, knowing what it is you're trying to create. As the environment is made, I assembled the objects in the 3D viewport. This is prior to going into the Unreal Engine, just to make sure that everything works, setting the snap positions, for example. This small scene never did come into the engine, but it served its purpose through the modeling process. When I was halfway through the duration of this project, I also released some images such as this. I like to release these images to get feedback, as well as to record the history of the project so that I can come back and see where it was a week ago and then see what, um, what has changed. Once the majority of the modeling was completed, I then laid it out in my viewport and gave everything a proper name so that when it came into the engine that we would have a way of organizing things understandably. 
I'm a firm believer that everything needs to conform to a naming convention, and that, that convention must be throughout the entire project. It really makes the entire process a lot easier, and you always know where things belong or how how to look for things. For example, if you're trying to uh, add planters to a set, you can select an object there. You see it's M ornament underscore planter. And if you want to find more, it's easy enough just to navigate to that directory and find a whole bunch more planters. As you can see inside the Unreal Engine, everything was imported with their names and placed into an organized collection of folders to keep it easy for the builder to put it together. When all the level building and modeling was completed, I then proceeded to create a package with screenshots and of the other requirements that I had to give into the studio. Uh, in the project files here, I have this folder named package, which contains a number of images that were sent in, such as some um, screenshots, as well as a compressed archive containing all the project files for the Unreal Engine. Now, with all things said, this did work fairly well. But um, like in any project, there's always those small things that didn't quite go as well as you would have liked to. And I wrote some of those down in my notes here to talk about. So I'm going to start, start with them now. Uh, for starters, when I created this environment, I didn't do the terrain before building the set. So what happened was I built the set, and then when I put the terrain in, I had to change the levels of the ground which resulted in me moving the buildings around, which, you know, it's kind of a waste of time. It's not a huge issue, like everything still worked, but it's a little efficiency thing that for next time, I'll definitely do that first. Now, where the models were concerned, I originally created all the walls and uh, other things like windows and such to be double-sided. So, I mean, I had geometry in the front where the player would see it, such as from down here, but I also had geometry in the back. I decided that that was wasteful because my original, my original plan had like more walls that you could see both sides of, but I decided that it would be more efficient just to cut that out. Well, this ended up being a problem because when we go to the back here, I discovered that Unreal Engine does not cast shadows from the back face. So what happened was all the lighting was messed up and I had to I had to make the shader for these for these objects double sided. Now, yes it works and in a pinch it made it look decent. However, it is a an efficiency concern for me. I think it would have been better to have that little bit extra geometry in the back than to make everything render out twice. Whenever I start modeling, I always bring in a scale reference. For example, for all these models, I used a grid that was large enough that I knew that two players could pass each other by with uh, one unit width, and that each player would be able to fit under it. But um, one of the things that I didn't do was use an actual human model. Instead, I used a capsule. So. Going into uh, Blender here, we could see that reference that I used. It's just the capsule, and here's the grid. Where, you, as you could see, two units high is just enough for him to walk under, and one unit across is enough for two players to pass each other. That way, players don't get stuck going by each other on the map. However, because that wasn't a real human model, I did have some issues with uh, the height of tables and chairs. Now, it's not major. I mean, it may it may be acceptable, but I think it's I think it's maybe a little bit too high. I mean, yes, these are bar bar tables that are meant to be high, but I mean, look at that. That's at eye level. That's that would be a really high table to see in in real life. Um like these tables, even these uh regular height tables are a bit high. That's like uh elbow height right there. So it's one thing to consider that in the future, use a real human scale and not just a capsule.
At the very end of the process, something that didn't go very well for me was the screenshots. Now, yes, the screenshots are okay. Uh, you know, we have black lighting here. I haven't used the Unreal Engine much, and lighting was not the big thing about it, but still, I would have liked to fix that. But what I really mean is the presentation of the images. The presentation like this, it's a little bit messy. Yes, I tried to group up things, but the fact is, because it was the very last thing in the project and the time was just gone, I di it didn't get um, like a nice template. Uh, as an example, I'm going to open up an image here. This is from the Gears of War franchise. And what we see here is their presentation of the image. Notice that it has, it's very uh, branded. It has a nice backdrop, has a little label, has a logo. You know, some of this comes down to my own personal branding, which I've been working on for some time. Uh, currently, I'm working on developing a logo and such, but as you could see, everything uh, fits together in a certain way. And my images didn't have that. And it's just one of those things where if I had thought about that earlier in the project, I could have come up with some, at least a very basic branding. But um, it, it just wasn't a, con a thought of mine in the beginning. But definitely, now that I've experienced this, and I've been in the situation where uh, this had to be done last minute, definitely need to do branding near the beginning. That's what I think anyways, just something really basic that fits with the image that you're trying to portray. It just makes it very more professional looking. Let's look at uh, the revised process. So the improvements to make in the future. Now we started with the conceptualization. We did the reference images, the text research, the topography, but I would like to, of course, include the brand identity as part of that in the beginning. Uh, just coming up with a nice still template and uh, also the lighting. So the lighting I didn't mention before, but uh, whenever I model, I always have a directional light in the scene so that I can see where the shadows lay. And in this case, in this case, I didn't have a solid lighting set, meaning that even though I had the light, the light that I used in the scene was always moving around so I could see different areas of the scene. And then when it came into the Unreal Engine, the lights moved around even more. Now, that being said, it's not like that's the end of the world. I did work to make a decent lighting solution here, but you know, I, I think that that's something that would be important just to have throughout the entire process is a stable light source where you know exactly what you're modeling to. Now that, now that works in the case of this particular kind of environment. You now this environment is very uh, first person shooter oriented. We have, you know, high detail in a small space kind of idea. You now we don't see things uh, from the top or from the sides because the player is not meant to ever see that. And in this case, uh, having a fixed lighting really works well. If it was some other, some other kind of uh, game where the sun is moving like a daytime, nighttime cycle, perhaps that doesn't matter, but it's something that I think needs to be addressed. The other thing that needs to be changed is, of course, the human scale. We already talked about uh, capsules are not good enough. Uh, doing the terrain before building the the set is a definite bonus. It's going to save you more time in efficiency, not having to rearrange the z-axis of everything to fit that. And also, start doing platform testing as soon as possible. Like the issue with the back face is not casting shadows. If I had imported that into the Unreal Engine beforehand, it wouldn't have had that issue and it could have been stopped before it was too late where time had run out. So some long-term improvements I would like to make is some import-export scripts. Um, I, I like working with Python. It's something that I've worked with for a while. I found that when I was doing the import-export from Blender to the Unreal Engine, it was kind of inefficient 
doing you know each of those models by hand it would be really nice if i had a script that would just center the model onto the you know the zero zero point on the grid export that import it into the appropriate folder in the unreal engine and then put the model you know back to where it was in other words because i don't store all the objects at the zero zero point in the scene just because i need everything laid out to see it now alternatively another way that that's sometimes done is that you have separate projects and you link those projects together so that the whole scene isn't actually in one project file the only reason I didn't do that was because I was kind of working on everything together as I was progressing with the project. So I knew, I wanted everything there so I could uh, measure it against each other and make small changes. But definitely a larger project, no, we could do the linking, but those export scripts could save a lot of time. So future plans for this project. Uh, I feel that I should keep working on this. Yeah. As I was doing it, I got all kinds of great ideas that either it just wasn't possible to do that in the amount of time given, or it was something that I didn't come up with until later on. I know I, I find the process of working on this stuff quite inspiring. You know, at the beginning, you have these kind of cliche ideas, you have you no know, preconceptions. Uh, you may come up with a few unique things and interesting things from your reference material, but I find that the the real creative part almost happens as you're modeling because you come up with new things that you haven't thought of before. So, moving in the future, I'd like to add some of that. Uh, definitely setting the normals. You'll notice that all the normal normals for the objects were hard, so hard edges on everything. Like for example these planters those planters are not smooth looking all the way around although they could be i just need to set that um uv unwraps i would definitely like to unwrap this stuff and get it textured and also completing a digital tutors course uh, i have a digital tutors course on the unreal engine i I've only done, I only did what I needed to do to get this project done. As I said, I haven't used the Unreal Engine that much, but definitely give it you no know, one or two days. You just watch those tutorials, do the stuff, and you know what you're doing. Thank you for watching. This has been Jeremy Bailey from TheEnvironmentGuy.com, and I hope that you got something from this video. Whether you're a hobbyist and you just learned something about the process of creating something, or you're just interested in this, but either way, you can find me at theenvironmentguy.com. You can also email me at theenvironmentguy at gmail.com. Mm -hmm.